Now today, I want to encourage you. I want to bring you words of hope. I want to build your faith. This is January 2023. We're still new. So I want to believe that things that you want to achieve, definitely. If you don't have dreams, if you don't have goals to reach, to achieve, then I don't even know what to say to you. This is a new year. This is a year you should tell yourself, this is my year. It is your year. You need to get out of your comfort zone and tell yourself, this is the year that I am going to get what I want. I've got two words for you. Whatever you're desiring, whatever you want to achieve this year, whatever you want with all your heart, you want to travel, you want to relocate, you're looking for a visa, you're looking for another job, you're looking for a promotion, whatever you're looking for, I've got two words for you. Just do it. Just do it. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Just do it. I'm telling you to do it because God has already planned everything out for you. You have nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to worry about. God is already ahead of you. You know, the most interesting thing about God is that he is already ahead of us. While you're trying, you know the problem with people, the reason why you're not going after what you want, the reason why your life is so mediocre like the way it is, it's because before you embark on anything, you are trying to figure out how it's going to work out. You're trying to plan. You're trying to put things into perspective. You're trying to put things into place. You're trying to gather the money. You're trying to gather, you know, you're trying to talk to people to help you out. You don't need that. You need God. The only person you need to talk to, to plan with, the only person you need to help you in the entire thing is God. You have to be comforted by these words that God is already steps ahead. God is already planned out for you. You have nothing to worry about. God knows all the obstacles that are going to take place on your journey. God knows all the hindrances, anything that is going to try to stop you from achieving what you want to achieve. God knows it already and he's way ahead. Everything is sorted out. Don't waste time trying to be comfortable. Don't waste time trying to gather money. Don't waste time trying to gather documents. Whatever it is that you are looking to achieve this year, you are wasting your time. Let me tell you something about God. While God is already planned ahead of you and steps ahead, God is not going to come and push you to do what you need to do. When, if God has put something in you, the dream, the desires, anything that you want to achieve this year, and you are sitting down on your couch, in your living room, wherever you are, you're wasting time watching TV, nonsense movies, nonsense music, wasting time with useless friends, not doing anything, just waiting. God is not coming to get you off your chair and say, hey, I said, go get the job. No, he's not coming. Maybe you're sitting down and you think God is coming. No, he's not coming to you, but he is waiting for you. That is what is going on. So are you ready to go on this journey that God has placed in your heart? Are you ready to go after your dreams? Because God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you halfway. God is waiting for you at the end. He's not going to start and push you and enforce you to do what he already knows. What he's looking for is your faith. You trust me. Do you believe in me that I have already taken care of everything for you? That's what he's waiting for. That's what he wants to see in you. Okay, if you say you trust me, like majority of people out there, they claim they have faith. I have faith, I believe. Okay, so now God is saying, show me. Show me, let me see your faith. If you trust me, if you believe in me, that I am who I am, that I've done for others and I'll do it for you. Show me, let's see. Peter, walk on water and come to me. I'm Jesus Christ, yes. I'm the Messiah, yes. I'm the son of the living God, yes. You trust me, yes. You believe I'm Jesus Christ, so walk on this water and come to me. That is what God is looking for. Can you walk on water? and go towards Jesus Christ. When he's on the other side, Jesus Christ did not start the journey with Peter. No, Jesus was already in the water. And as he's calling Peter, he's already waiting. This is what I'm telling you. He's waiting, God is waiting for you 
halfway, somewhere on the way, he's waiting for you. As you get stuck, as you get confused, as the journey gets tough, he's ready to rescue you. He's ready to say, my hand is here. Keep coming, keep going. I'm waiting for you and I'll do it for you. I'll sort it out for you. Let me tell you something about God. God is always on time. Nothing and nobody in this entire world, I don't care who you are, the devil, whatever, can stop God from achieving what he wants to achieve with your life. Nothing, even by one second, he's on time. He's already, everything is already set out. There's a young man in the Bible called Joseph. Joseph at 17 years old, Joseph did not pray to God that God, I want to be the prime minister of Egypt. No, 17 years old, Joseph is enjoying his life with his family, with his brothers. It's fun. He is okay. He's great. He has no complaints at all. And God orchestrates this journey. God just, all of a sudden, he forms this whole scenario that Joseph's brothers now start to hate on him. Okay. They now start to throw him. They start to discuss how to kill him. God knew everything. Everything was planned out. Sometimes in our lives, sometimes in your life, you're going through a situation right now where God has planned it. You didn't plan it. You don't know what's going on. But you see yourself coming across difficulties in your life. And just starting as you've embarked on a journey to go after your dreams or to go after whatever you want. All of a sudden, there are difficulties along the way. God has created it. God is watching you. One thing you should be confident and comforted about in this today is that God is with you. The Genesis 39, God, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord is with you and the Lord will be with you. Just go. Just do it. Just start. You have nothing to worry about. Joseph starts on this journey. They discuss how to kill him. All of a sudden, Reuben says, no, 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 let's not kill him, please. Let's just throw him in, into the pit, at least. Let, let, let's just do something, but let's not shed blood. They agree, they throw Joseph into the pit. After that, now Joseph is in the pit. All of a sudden, they take him out, sell him for slavery. After that, Joseph, you know the story, Joseph goes to Potiphar's house. They lie on him that he slept with Potiphar's wife. All of a sudden, he goes to prison. Can you see? Can you see what this young boy is going through and he's not complaining, he's not yelling to God, he's not yelling, why am I going through this? Why is it going happening? I did not call this on myself. What in the world is going on? I wanna go back to my father. I wanna go back to my brothers. He's not doing that. He's quietly and obediently doing what God is setting him on. Can you do that? Are you complaining? about what God has said before you? Are you complaining or are you trusting God? Do you keep going and going back, back and forth, back and forth? Do you have second thoughts? Joseph never had any second thoughts. Stop having second thoughts. Is there anybody you're relying on apart from God, you're making a mistake? If that is the situation, if there's anybody you are relying on, you are making a big mistake. Do not rely on anybody. Keep going by yourself. You have God. And the Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> this line, it encourages me in my life. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with me. When I embarked on a journey from Botswana to UK, not knowing anything, the Lord was with me. And God made sure I know and I see that he was with me. God never failed me, and I'm telling you, God will never fail you. Take it from me. Now forget about Joseph right now. Take it from me. God is with you, and he will be with you. But what is required, the requirement for you to pass this test and for you to qualify by Almighty God is do you trust him enough to start? Do you trust him enough? to obey and go on this journey, whatever you want. Is it the business? Is it the promotion? Is it you relocating to another country? Is it scholarship? Is it healing? Is it anything that you want? 
They're registering a company, a business, whatever it is. Are you faithful enough? Do you have the faith that is required? That's the question. Because you see, having faith, going to church 20 times a day is not faith. Praying 100 times a day, it is not faith. It doesn't mean you have faith. Doing all of this tithing and everything, that is not a sign of having faith. Let me tell you what faith is. Faith is when you've gone through difficulties in your life. You have been tested and tested and you come out on the other side and you can stand in front of the world and say, I have faith. And we ask you, why do you say you have faith? What have you gone through? What happened to you? And you can say to us, I have seen God. Literally, I have seen his hand. I was about to die and God scooped me out of the mouth of the enemy. God closed the mouth of the grave. I was gone, Miso. I have faith. Now we can believe you. Miso, I was broke. I had nothing. I had lost everything in my life. And then we can ask you, so when you were going through these difficulties, what did you do? Now at this point, we want to see if through these difficulties, did you have faith in God? Or did you have faith in somebody else? Now you can tell us, Miso, I had faith in God. This is what I did. I never ran to people. I remained the same. I remained broke. I remained sick. And I was talking to my father. When I was struggling in my life, I never sought for alternatives. I did what God wanted me to do. I went through these difficulties. Now you can stand in front of us and say, I have faith. Not I go to church every Sunday. You don't have faith. That is not faith. Not I tithe every Sunday. That is not faith. That is not true. You don't have faith. You just have faith. You are a Christian, which is okay. You go to church, but that's fine. If your life has been smooth sailing, if you've never had difficulties in your life, if you've never been tested, the only person who qualifies and gives faith it is God himself. When he has put you in the university of faith and you go through the test, you write all the examinations set out by almighty God, then you can qualify. You get qualified by him when he's satisfied with your faith. Let me remind you once again, only faith pleases God. In other words, you are qualified when your faith has pleased God. My question is, is your faith pleasing God? Because when he's pleased, he's moved. That is when you can stand and confidently hit yourself on the chest and say, I have faith and I know what I'm talking about. And when we ask you these questions, show us, tell us what happened then you can boldly tell us, Miso, I became brave, I became bold, I became fearless. I went ahead knowing that my father is with me. And then we can say, okay, now you're talking. So tell us what happened. And you can tell us, I had no plan. I had no backup plan. I had no one else to rely on. I was relying on my father. I, I did this without knowing what is going to come out of me. Now we can believe you that you have faith. If you've never gone through any difficulties in your life, it's been smooth, nothing you've never, when your life is perfect, there's no need for faith. And I can tell you, if you've never struggled in your life, I feel sorry for you because you need to have that encounter of life because that is God wanting to strengthen you. It's God himself who will qualify you. So when you've gone, ever gone through any, any troubles, any difficulties, where you needed to have faith, where faith was the only thing you needed, no other option, then you don't know what faith is all about. You're just hearing faith, but faith is exactly what I'm telling you. Look at the Bible. All of the women and men of faith that we're talking about right now, none of them had it easy. That's why we're talking about them today. We're talking about Abraham, a man of faith. Abraham, who was told to embark on a journey. He didn't know where he was going. Abraham said, yes, my Lord. Abraham was told to go and kill his own son. Not God killing the son. Remember, it is, it's not like God said, come, bring the son. I want to kill the son. <laughs> you, must, you must understand that. Sometimes when you're reading these things, your mind automatically goes ahead and maybe tells you, oh, God wanted to kill Isaac. No. It was you, Abraham, 
go kill your son for me. Go kill him. You do the killing. And Abraham obeyed. Who can do that in these days? Nobody. Three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why are you not obeying our king? They said, no, you can throw us into the fire. We are ready because we know our God will save us. And even if he does not, we will not bow down. Same thing with Daniel. Daniel went into the lion's den. He said, I will go, no problem. All the women of faith and, and men, they've gone through what I'm teaching you. They've gone through difficulties, they've been tested. That's what we're talking about there. Are you talking about the woman of the issue of blood? That is a woman who moved from New York to Haburoni to go meet Jesus Christ. Who, who does that? From another city to another city. A woman heard that Jesus was coming to another city. So the woman is in New York. She decides, you know what? There's Jesus in Haburoni. I want to go there. Booking flight after flight, connecting flights while she's bleeding. That woman has been bleeding for 14 years. In 14 years, where was God? God was still there. Did he come and stop the bleeding? No. He just watched. The woman was bleeding. So what? Many people are bleeding. And they're not doing anything different. This woman did something extraordinary. Where God was shocked himself. God. In other words, God was pleased. So that is why that woman got healed. Her faith pleased God. Her faith saved her. Her faith healed her. Can you do the same? Can you duplicate these stories in your life? That's what you're supposed to do. That's why the Bible is there. For you to duplicate, to do what they did. But in your own way, in your own life, in your own little world, in your, according to how your life is designed. My encouragement to, do, to you today is stand up. Just do it. God is with you. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord had favor, favored Joseph in the sight of everyone. That is how God is. As he's walking with you, as he's with you, he also equips you. He also uh, adorns you with what we call favor. When you have favor from God, you are untouchable. You'll float on this world. People will wonder, are you living with us? Are you here? You will realize you're not of this world. While you, even though you're in this world, you are not of this world. When you trust God, when you believe in God, that's exactly what he will do for you. When you want to spend time with God, you love God, you show him that you trust him. You don't ask questions. You don't complain. You obey. God will reward you. God rewards the faithful. All of a sudden, Joseph goes through all the situations. He's not complaining, even though Joseph is lied about that he slept with Potiphar's wife, he's in prison. All of a sudden, Joseph helps the other two prisoners. To, they go. He says, look, Mr. Baker, when you go out there, don't forget me. You know, the man, the baker forgot about Joseph. Joseph continued to spend two more years in prison for something he didn't do. Can you do that? He never cried. He never complained. He never yelled. He never insulted the baker because the baker forgot about him. But that was God's plan. Can you trust God knowing that he's got everything figured out on your behalf? Can you trust him? Can you believe? Can you just go ahead? This is your year today. This year, 2023, is your year to get out of a comfort zone and be fearless, be brave, and be bold. Let me tell you what faith is. It is simple. I want to warn you. Faith is dangerous. Faith is basically going through, being ready, bold, fearless, to go through dangerous situations. Because God will throw in these dangerous situations in front of you. Are you going to go ahead? Because the situation is dangerous. Are you ready to go into the danger zones in this university of faith? Because those are some of the tests you'll go through. Dangerous situations. If you're not bold, if you're not fearless, if you're not brave, you will not make it. 
It's simple as that. As Peter was walking on water to go to Jesus Christ, he was brave and fearless. That was dangerous. None of you here can even walk on the muddy paddle. So Jesus walked on the sea, like the deep waters. Peter walked on that. That's brave, that's fearless, that's bold. The moment he started to doubt, he went down. His focus was on Jesus before. All of a sudden, his focus left Jesus and he focused on other things. That is what some of you are doing. You're focusing on other things. You're focusing on other people. You're not focusing on Jesus. That is why you drown. Or that is why you turn back to where you, you came from. That is why you stop. You don't continue with the journey. I'm here to encourage you today. Don't stop. When I embarked on this journey coming to Britain, not knowing anything with a one-way ticket, with 60 pounds on me, I didn't know where I was going. I took my two young children because God said so. I said, God, I'll trust you. Nothing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going to sleep. I didn't know what I was going to feed my kids with 60 pounds. Come on. That 60 pounds finished by the time I arrived in the airport. I trusted God with all my life. Everything was relying on my faith in my father because he said so. Can you do the same? Let me tell you, God knows the difficulties you're going to encounter on the way. God knows what you need to succeed. You don't know what you need to succeed. God knows that. Nobody else knows what you need to succeed on your journey. Your destiny is in God's hands. And he's already figured out what you need to help you, the equipment. He's got that already. Everything is waiting for you along the way. You'll keep encountering all these things and God will be with you.